Hi, welcome to the Stock in It Zombies. I'm Amy, also known as Jane Itma. And I'm Megan, also known as Just Run It. And this is episode 112. Cool. It's been cold here. Yes, it's very cold here. As John Stewart would put it. <laughs> Did you see that one? Uh, he said, I would grab a witch's teat for warmth. <laughs> It's a, what are they calling it? Um, it's the Arctic vortex. <laughs> it's got a, it's, a, a, yeah, a menacing Arctic vortex. Um, but yeah, I have resisted the opportunity to screenshot the current temperature and put it out there just so yeah. that everybody that's, I don't know. I mean, there's my, um, I was talking to um, somebody at work yesterday and I was like, you know, we live in Minnesota. So we've kind of, you kind of have to expect it, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I could see somebody in like down south, like Georgia or Tennessee or Mississippi, those people not having like sturdy coats and mittens and hats, mm -hmm. right? Like we live in Minnesota. We're Minnesotans, So yeah. we should really, I mean, not that we enjoy the negative 13 as a high day, but like we should kind of come to expect that a little bit right like mm -hmm. be prepared for it yep. not that you want kids waiting for buses or anything like that yeah. but um yeah cold yes very uh i was born yesterday oh yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um i had a birthday and i just wanted to say thank you to uh everyone who wished me happy birthday in one way or another um Thank you for the outreaching of love. I felt very loved. Um, I got this beautiful scarf that you see here. Um, this is the Red Cedar uh, by Tin Can Knits. And I mentioned on the podcast, and my friend watched the podcast and saw it, that I really liked not only the stitch patterning, but the color of the, the sample one that was in the book. Mm -hmm. And she contacted, I, I believe it's Everything Old M. Oh, okay. And got the exact colorway from the wow. sample and knit it for me. Isn't that fantastic? It's big and beautiful and wonderful. And it's a big hug, basically. It's lovely. So, yes, it's a nice size. And I um, got this necklace that says knit on it. Mm -hmm. um, and Amy gave me an imaginary yarn, um, skein of yarn. What do you get the knitter who has everything? And is cold sheeping. <laughs> is cold sheeping. You get her magic yarn that appears at her doorstep. Um, so when she gets the twitches, yeah. she will send me a, a quick text. This is the one. Yeah. I must have it. My conscience is getting the better of me. Because I, I, I got money from um, family members, right? And like I'm just like, the purpose, it's kind of like the self-striping. Um, I'll draw an analogy to the self-striping. K L like the purpose isn't to not purchase yarn, the and save money. The purpose is I should not add it to my stash, right? Mm -hmm. So the resolution isn't so that I don't buy yarn, and so that more doesn't continue to um, be added to my already sable stash. Um, so, and then my husband got me a juicer because he's all about buying me um, kitchen. Okay. Um, what would you call that? kitchen aids. appliances kitchen appliances yeah in years past he's gotten me a keurig a bread machine um a food processor <laughs> and this year i got a juicer which fits in with my new year's resolution to not drink pop okay diet pop um so we we bought some apples and celery and stuff have mm -hmm. you tried the new cold press juice um downtown i have not is mm -hmm. it good I tried a really healthy one, so it's lots of green in it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Lots of cucumber and kale. And yeah. So I'm not necessarily a fan of that one. Um, I felt like I was drinking a very healthy beverage, mm -hmm. but um, it would have been good for them to stick some carrot juice. There. Yeah. I watched the documentary on Amazon Prime called Fat, Sick, and Nearly Dead, mm -hmm. and this guy went on a juice fast, which is not was not my intention when I was looking at the juicing, but just that. It was a really good way to get vitamins, like dietary vitamins, not like supplements that you take and it's been processed and whatever, but dietary vitamins that your body really needs. And he like cured himself of an autoimmune skin disease mm. and got himself off of 
cholesterol meds and all kinds of good stuff by, you know, drinking his vegetables and fruits. And mm. so it was interesting. I thought I'd give it a go. Make I something tend to tasty. Eat my vegetables. And I fruits, do too, though. So, but his point was, know. and why, and you know, again, he was fasting, was that he, he wouldn't be able to eat the bulk if he was just going to eat nothing but fruits and vegetables. So mm. he had to grind it down and drink it in juice form huh. to get the number of calories in any given day. Because okay. he wasn't eating the other stuff, right? It was just the fruits and veggies. Okay. Anyway, juicing. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Other administrati, um, I wanted to mention that uh, at the right before the stroke of 2014, um, on New Year's Eve, I um, donated to the National Women's Health Network, drum roll please, $1,300, $1,350 to be exact, um, in honor of my sister. And I uh, had a few questions. People asked me if after that point it wouldn't be donated, and it's still going to be donated, but I'll, more than likely it'll end up being rolled into like a 2014 donation. Um, I'm not doing it. I'm not, the, the pattern isn't making enough that I feel as if I should give them, you know, a whole bunch or, you know, little m amounts throughout the year. Mm -hmm. um, and so thank you to everyone that has nipped that. Um, again, I'm not overly concerned about that dollar amount. I would really like um, the love to be knit into the hat and give to a loved one and the story shared or, um, you know, your own loved one's memory honored. Mm -hmm. Um, so there's that. Um, I got some really great responses on the Rabbit Linux oh, yes, inquiry. Oh, did. So February 9th, I believe, is when the Rabbit Linux begins, and it's 19 days. Um, we had suggestions on a project for each of the rings, mm -hmm. coloring each of the rings. We have some um, LGBTA folks that um, our supportive folks said that they were going to do some rainbow themed um, projects. And then I think that we're, I'm going to go with the big Martina Bem or Bame, however you say it, um, shawl okay. that will use a whole skein of Womise. Um, if I can knit an even star, which was like 1,400, 1,500 yards, um, I can do the the big 1600, 1700 in when it has no pearl stitches. And yeah, lace and there's extra and days this time. So. Oh, there is. Well, I mean it's 19 days. You did the other one. Yeah, in nine. Nine. So, so but I think it, it's the Lin the Olympics run the same amount of time in summer and winter. I don't know. It would make more sense to add more into the winter because it seems like those are a lot of disparate locations and mm -hmm. like higher technical difficulty. You know, it's not running and swimming right. and biking and it's like cross country skiing and yeah, I would say yeah. The biggest thing is like all the different parks would have to be further away than it, you know the mm -hmm. Olympic parks built for the summer seem to be closer. Do you seem to? Yeah, but I've only ever watched them from TV, so mm -hmm. no. I swear I turned that off. My phone's making noises. Oh. Um. And then last, I wanted to briefly mention that I, as part of my resolution, started a blog. So JustRunIt.com got kicked off. The Venn diagram of what we talk about here and what I talk about on the podcast will intersect um, because I am that intersection. Um, but it's basically written word, right? So I don't know, Amy, if you've ever lamented, but sometimes on the podcast, I don't say things as eloquently as I'd like to in, in written form. Um, my written form would be worse. <laughs> I speak no good. <laughs> um, I type no good. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I you know I I really love reading blogs, and so um, I guess I just felt like it would be fun to put something out there. I don't get as much into the fitness side in this podcast, and so oh, okay. hopefully I can you know talk a little bit more about my patterns without it feeling like an infomercial to you um, on the blog. Um, and talk more about my fitness side and I'm hoping to start um, reading or listening to books and maybe talking about, you know, just odds and ends, things that maybe aren't as pertinent to a knitting podcast as, um, you know, a book. Right, because it's more about you and, oh, yeah, 
me, justrunit.com is me, second at zombies is you and me. Right. So, or I should do the <laughs> motion differently. You're not me, I'm me. Um, but anyway, so if you're a blog reader and you enjoy um, reading blogs and I don't completely annoy you in written form, or in verbal form for that matter, um, you could go give it a look. Cool. And that's all I have in Administrati. Do you have I any used to be. I used to be FOC. Yeah. Jazzy. Friend. That is short for friend of cat or friend of Chaz. And you can be an FOC squared if you're a friend of two cats. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And being crowned an FOC um, gives you such rights as not having to get up and get things. People oh, yeah. wait on you because you are a friend of a cat. Can you get that I, I cat on my lap? Yeah. Can you get, turn, turn, get the controller and do that? I need some tea. Will you go get me some tea? It's a powerful thing, y'all. It is. Um, finished objects. And then, um, oh, I was just going to say that my Revolinic uh, project is going to be the Myrtle. Mm. Um, it's a lacy, a lace weight sweater. And I've decided not to start. Um, I was going to start it this month, but I'm going to start it for the Revolinic instead. That's a good Good plan. Good plan. You are so pro, you are um, putting off the casting on of things. So the um, month of the square is going strong. Ooh. I have four tiny woven squares, and I have two big blanket squares. Did you see Knit One Wendy's? Yes, I did. That was really Zoom cool. cool. Um, blanket. I still might not crochet around mine. We'll see when I get to the 90 squares mark if I'm like, yeah, we're doing some crochet. Yeah. Um, but uh, we'll see. So far, I still like it, and it's, it's okay to just... I'm happy watching the pile of squares accumulate. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not anxious to get it into a blanket yet. Yeah, I've, I've, I've had this weird inkling to do something modular lately. Like, mm -hmm. Wouldn't it be nice to have, like, something that I was building towards? Mm hmm And then I balled up the next one. I love that green. You green, know green, I do. Green. And then I finished my um, zombie barbecue socks. That is a full pair of socks for Ooh. me. And that was the last pair of socks on, so I'm very sock itchy right now. So I want to uh, start some more socks. But until I do so, I need to get slippers for the mom done. So I have a hole oh. mm. in cakewalk yards. Yes. And then I have spinning FOs. So you are fo I am. So I have Ramboulet, and I will talk about the Shetland first. Um, I got this from Godiva Yarns or Knits um, on Etsy, and it's, um, yeah, it's a Shetland. It's basic. It was very inexpensive. I got six ounces for under $15 shipped, so that was amazing. And um, so I took the first three ounces and I made a, uh, I would say, a light fingering uh, single ply. And then with the second three, I just decided to go crazy and do a thick and thin and then make it a two ply. And on the, um, you know, and I applied this very lightly because I wanted it to be lofty. Um, and when I applied it lightly, what I really wanted to do, um, I don't know if I might run it through and apply it some more, but um, I was just trying to feed it as fast as I could through to, and it looked like it was really good twist, um, good enough twist uh, out here, but once it got on the bobbin, it didn't look quite as good. Um, but at the same time, I'm sure if I ball this up and start knitting with it, I'll like the loftiness just the same as if I ran it through again. Mm. So I'm not sure it's worth the work of running it through again. It's not too many yards, but um, and I don't I don't have the yardages off the top of my head, but I will document them once I get it out on my Ravel Ravelry page. And then the Ram, um, this one I got. And curled it for you. 
Oh, what did I get? I decided it was a DK, so hmm. around 300 and some yards. And that was, um, and it bloomed. I Something about Rambouillet is magic. Um, I spun it up, it didn't seem that much different than Merino except for the, the hand of it, you know, mm -hmm. just the way it felt. Put it in the bath, soaked it, um, rang it out, hung it up, weighted it down to, to take the kinks out. Um, if it were summer, I would go out and thwack it, but um, in the winter I just hang it and, and hope for the best. Stick to the ground at negative 16. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> black and then stuck yep. um but as it was drying it just went yep. and turned into magic so i i am again in love with spinning rambouillet it i it is the magic it is the magic yarn my empire was like that as well right like i thought that washing it with hopefully it stands up and it was like no it loves being washed yeah and so you can see what i got here Beautiful stuff, baby. So I've already documented this one, and I'm guessing it was like around 340, because I was thinking it was a DK, but maybe that, maybe it's more of a sport yardage, because it's yeah. four ounces. Yeah, DK, you, like, the um, DK 100 grams was But it's definitely poofed to a DK, I would knit a DK pattern with this, mm -hmm. for sure. Yep. I have to um, do a gauge swatch. Yep. Because I know that, you know, the difference between, like, worsted and woolen spun things often changes gauge a lot for a... Yep. For a yarn. So, yes. Continued love for the Rambouillet. I might need to collect some more. I think I only have two more in my stash. <laughs> With, and tons of like BFL and Merino and other stuff, but I think the ramp away I'm down to two. You should knit it and enjoy it again. Well, the first ramp away, I barely got it dry and I was knitting a hat out of it because mm -hmm. I was so happy. Um, and this one, I just might, you know, love it in the skein for a while because it's just very pretty. So fun. pretty. Mm -hmm. So little, very pretty. But that was it for FOs. And that's all. Huh? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I finished my little stitches hoodie. That's right. I'll yes. bet linen stitch. And I, this is all I had left of the main color. So I didn't just skate out or, um, you know, skate by and not do the hood. I did not have enough yarn for the hood. So I added some length to the body of it and you know you don't really think of adding you know this small of diameter a couple of inches to the the length of it would really change the picture. but it does which is why this wouldn't make a hood on this um, but uh, yeah he is in love with it absolutely in love with it um, the quote that I gave <laughs> out on Instagram was he asked me, Mommy, do I have to take it off to take a bath? <laughs> and I was like, yes, yes, you do. And then he got out of bath. Can I put it back on? And I was like, I podcast it. <laughs> I can't wear it to bed. You so can't sleep in it. I'm sorry. So, um, again, this is the Little Stitches hoodie by Amy Kanegi. The um, contrast color here was my leftover from my flax in the gray tabby colorway of um, Dream in Color Classy. Uh, the main body is 716 knit in the undead English patient or dead English patient. Um, this pattern works really good with variegated. Uh, the only modifications I made were I cast on less stitches, A, because this was worsted, and B, it just seemed really bulky for the cuffs, and then I increased up once I got to the main part because it would have been too skinny in the linen stitch. And then the top part called for a applied um, fake rib up here. And I just did some V, v decreases here, like kind of like a V-neck, and then picked up stitches versus mm. doing an applied one. So it was applied up to here. And then you just worked the 
the top part and I, I like the way it turned out I had to rip back because I did just go straight and then this angle was too great mm. when I picked it up when it joined in the round there was a really big pucker right there and I didn't mm -hmm. like it so I ended up ripping back and doing the decreases here but I'm very happy with the way it turned out the V looks very attractive on him and he loves it because he can tell what is the front oh yep yes a lot of handmade things um, grandma Joe makes him pants um, and he can't figure out what's the back because it doesn't have a tag. Mm -hmm. This is very obvious what the front is. So <laughs> he um, wouldn't give me a normal smile. So he's smiling up at the sky. And then I have a couple where he's doing some action shots. But <laughs> uh, turned him into a superhero. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's Little Stitch of Sooty. I also had an off-air design FO that I finished up. Um, and uh, the club that it's for, she actually announced the, the, um, that I would be. So Mary Gale, um, out on Ravelry of Spartacus Dies, is having a holiday club, and it's celebrating kind of unconventional. I think there's Easter in there, but um, March's is unconventional. It's like mm -hmm. a Welsh holiday. And then mine is a um, Groundhog's Day hat. Mm -hmm. So I had a Groundhog's Day. I can't, I'm not going to tell you anything more about it, but it's a hat in honor of Groundhog's Day. Um, and I, I had a lot of fun with it. Cool. And it's, it's going to be fun. So go check that out. I'll linky loo it. Um, but so I had that FO as well. Cool. Yeah, I felt like, I feel like I, I mean, compared to all of your FOs, I don't really have much to show for my last week. Um, but in addition to that, I've got some other design work that I'm doing. So. Stay tuned. My goodness. I guess you're going to have to hop out to the blog to get like little like sneaky half shots of like pieces. <laughs> in black and white. <laughs> yeah, in black and white. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's, yeah, it, I, I really enjoy um, designing for on a theme. It's really hard, don't get me wrong, but I do, I kind of channel my inner project runway. Right? Oh, yeah. Like, <laughs> you must here's the challenge and, and, and incorporate these parameters. So, cool. yeah, Neat. I'm having fun with it. Cool, cool. You've got a work in progress. So yeah, my other slipper for my mom. And um, this is, for those of you who have knit them know that this is a very quick project and I will have them done in no time zoom zoom. So I will talk about my other ones. Um, I got the front of my Dr. G vest done um, and I had to go by measurements rather than repeats because I'd have to do four more repeats on this. <laughs> well, does it does it meet up? In no, the, okay. I, I looked at the schematic. I don't know how that that I mean maybe my row gauge is off so I went by measurements they said right, or much. 10 inches yeah four more repeats yeah I don't you know which would have been 16 more not repeats of the it's pattern supposed but to be like of a the deep <laughs> like to your belly button maybe? I looked at like that too the guy deep. looked pretty you know I don't okay. know what I did I added inches to the bottom but that shouldn't have changed where the armpits happened mm -hmm. and in relationship to the V and actually I think it would have even been lower if I, you know if I, so anyway um I just went by measurements and I held it up to my husband a lot and went I don't think I can do any more this is it um and so this is a little bit wider than it calls for in the pattern for the size that I'm knitting and you didn't get to do those decreases yeah so and and I didn't want to fudge them I got to the same amount as like I'm knitting the small I think yeah the small because it's got a lot of positive ease uh small over um and this was like the extra large measurement of of this part because i didn't get to do all you those. don't end up picking up any stitches and doing any ribbing you do okay you do it's gonna be a nice um a nice v because mm -hmm. right now it seems like a girlish v but if you put that ribbing in there it's gonna tighten up and it's gonna be a nice one to go over a collared shirt mm -hmm. And I think that it's going to be just fine. I, I'm not worried about it. But yeah, there was some, um, yeah, make it work moments uh, with the front. Have you decided what you're going to do for the back? I am going to be in pattern. Okay. 
because I just felt like that was going to be too boring. Yeah. So I have started and now I know in general how many repeats I'm going to have to do to get to the, through the, this to the, um, to the end of the back. Um, cause I can just hold it up to this every time mm -hmm. and it'll be great. So that started, I got started that on the bus this morning. Started the patterning, the ribbing was done before I got on the bus. Um, don't think I'm that fast. My, my commute is not that long. <laughs> and I got a little bit further on this and it may not look like much, but I had to rip back because I did the ribbing wrong. Hmm. I got off somehow and didn't correct and uh, so it's just like me yeah, start over so um, this was um, restarted and I'm further than I was before cool I'm gonna be knitting one for my brother soon <laughs> yeah I saw the the Minnesota um, sunrise uh, recently and thought that it went nicely with this yarn it was mm -hmm. purple and gray and pink yep yeah, it's beautiful then more 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 as usual so here's just some progress on the kibbit it is really soft yeah and it, it just for the lightweightness of lightweightness of it it's super warm so that is progressing slowly but you know I went doubled the inches on that since the last time you saw it we were just cast on right had I? Last week. Oh, okay. So you more than doubled. More than doubled, sorry. <laughs> okay. From zero to... And then I haven't put this out on my projects page yet. It's like I'm not even counting it because it was just me going, I gotta cast on another sock. So these are my Perry the Platypus socks and they are um, just barely started. His little toe. But pow, they're going to be so much fun. Yeah, you can see that they are Perry the Platypus already. Yeah, teal, black, and the orange I would have been, yeah, I would have been tempted to cast on the, um, the toe in the, the bill color. Oh, <laughs> yeah. It would have looked like a little bit of a bill. That's true. I just started where the ball had ended up and That's good. didn't want to cut out. The yeah. other, the other beginning was a black, so. Mm -hmm. Like me. But yeah, I'm pretty excited about these. These are for my husband. Um, this Doing plain vanilla? You know, I think I might do something simple like a vanilla latte or a Skype rib, a skip rib. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, don't know yet, but that's my thoughts on it. And that's why you whips? Yes. She's heavy on whips, heavy on bows. Yeah, she's got a lot of knitting she's been doing. Yeah, what, what, where did all you, know, like, did I neglect my family this week? What happened? Uh, you just made, yeah, maybe you just gave a lot of things a lot of love. I don't know. Um, I cast on my first self striping of the year. This is um, Vesper, in the, and I, my Vesper sash has gone down significantly. Um, in the masquerade uh, colorway, which is very bright, mm -hmm. bright in your day. And I'm just doing a very simple um, four by four uh, broken rib. So just a little something. I started doing something else and I ripped it out. I was like, nah, let's just do something simple. Um, I went out and was looking at what I had tagged as self-striping in my stash and was very proud of myself. I whittled it down to 36 and then I went back to our thread that was for last year where we posted our embarrassing number and it was 35. <laughs> <laughs> so I whittled up to 36. <laughs> so not only did I buy my 12 and then whatever I gave away out of my stash last year, I didn't do exact I didn't give away exactly 12 because we had folks donate generously. Um, to the KAL. Um, so yeah, I just kept right up with it. Uh, I guess I should be happy that I didn't accelerate. Yeah. One. One, one little scale. One measly scale. And that doesn't include some that I've recently, not recently bought, because I am not buying. I'm cold sheeping. 
um, but that have arrived. I bought it before the 31st. Um, so yeah, then my number would be larger. But if it hasn't arrived yet, it's not in my stash. So. That's another thing about your blog. It has the, the number of days since her last yarn purchase. And it is, it is inspiring me. I look <laughs> at it and I say, I can do this. <laughs> <sighs> Um, so I've been working on those, and then I finished up the um, oh, the back of my Halalea out of the mustache yarns. Ooh, yes, and it looks a little short, but the front comes over. So I that's why I thought of that when I was looking at your vest because mm -hmm. the front is a little longer, and then you do the um, apply or the. The pretty part down below. I've yet to cast on um, the front panel, but that will be soon. I really enjoy the fabric again that this is creating. It's really nice. Amy and I were kind of comparing her MCS mm -hmm. with this because it's fingering on fours. So I took the opportunity with no yarn attached to create <laughs> two balls <laughs> so that I didn't. And then I had magic knotted it because I was like, this is, I'm so smart. Not a, and I couldn't find the middle, so I wound until I had I had gone past the middle, and then I had to rewind it again to try to find that knot. You found it though. I did. Okay. So this is they are exactly halved. Okay. Let's see, can see where the oh. magic knot was. You have to cut it. I did. I cut it. Um, so I now have two green balls of mm -hmm. yarn instead of the one that liked to uh, make knots with itself. And away I go. I'm hoping to make some really great progress on this now that I'm done with the little stitches. Mm -hmm. And those are the only two things other than that design work that I have on the needles. Cool. Yeah. I was thinking um, when you mentioned magic knot that I want to make one of those magic ball ruffle ruffle shawl shawls. Mm -hmm. I do have lots of scraps. They're on my declutter list. Like, yeah, I so gotta make a, a use it or lose it decision. Yeah, I can't throw them away. There's gotta I can't. Be well, no, I wouldn't throw them away. I would give them away. Okay. Or recently, I cleaned out my closet and I was like, you know what? There's a bunch of gals at work that always compliment me on my shawls. And I've just recently come to grips with the fact that I, while I enjoy knitting triangular shawls, I never wear them. Mm -hmm. Never. And I don't know if I just can't figure out how to style them. I'm not really great with styling if you haven't figured it out. Amy and I were having a conversation with this. I love it, but I don't know how to make it look pretty for you. <laughs> it, it feels nice and it looks pretty to me, but I don't know how to make it look pretty for you. Um, and so I just took like, kind of like you, I just kind of took a bag in of triangular shawls into um, work. Like I kept my, I kept a few of the more intricate ones and whatever, but ones that I'd had for years and years and hadn't really been wearing more recently and they were just astounded like every day I see one of them walking by with one of my triangular oh, shawls cute. and it makes me happy yeah. oh it does yeah. yeah that would be awesome yeah totally like you know they love it it's keeping them warm they feel stylish I'm I'm happy it's being used kind of like cool. you were saying you can't throw it away I couldn't I wouldn't be able to bear to like put it in a donation bag right because what if the guy that's donating or that's going through it at Salvation Army or whatever decides that it's not worth putting out on the floor right I mean yeah. I've got friends that would wear it I've got knitters that would recycle the yarn I've yeah got, yeah so yep totally understand the declutter train might visit my scraps yeah, I mean, we're still in the building of, of varying temperatures, so mm -hmm. I'm going to leave my shawls there as long as I can. The gloves, the mitts, that was way more popular. Like, those those are gone. But the mm -hmm. shawls, people, I just don't know that they understand how warm a wool shawl is. Mm -hmm. Like, they don't understand. You put that cloud over your shoulders, and you're like, oh. Yeah. So much better. But I was trying to describe that to my brother because I'm knitting him that measure in love. 
Um, which, by the way, my mom said that of everything that I knit her, I knit her that atelier. Oh. I've knit her whatever. She's like, that measure and love, that I've gotten more use out of that, and I enjoy that the most. Because she says she she wraps it around her neck, and then she wraps it around her hood, and it keeps oh. her hood on her. Oh, okay. Um, on her head. Um, but I was trying to explain to my brother, because he, um, my mom made him a polar fleece scarf. And I said, well, the polar fleece scarf might be a better windbreak because mm -hmm. it's really t I can't knit that tight as mm -hmm. tight as the as the um, cool. synthetic would be woven the wool would be a lot warmer right because it's natural and wool and right so I can't knit it as tightly gauged so it won't be a good wind block as good of wind block but and again yeah I just maybe they just don't understand the mm -hmm the um, benefits of wool and, and how that lightweight lacy thing could actually warm your mm -hmm. um, your shoulders but um, I don't know we're kind of used to our building so we dress in layers quite well but if there's a, a surprise day where it's like well it was warm yesterday but now it's freezing um, this also come in handy, mm -hmm. handy but I only put them in this winter so maybe during the summer they'll get more use because you're not wearing as much and um, mm -hmm. air conditioning is cold, yo. 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 But that's so cool. Uh, enabling. Uh, I will have the same. Oh, you have lots of. Yeah. You're, you're bringing might... up the, the quota for the team? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> so, um, you enabled me on this spun right round. Mm -hmm. It's the storm colorway. Is this Corydale? Yes. This is the Corydale. Um, it was a lot of yards for not much money and it'll make some seriously, uh, serious socks. Yeah. I think. That's, that's my plan with it anyway. It's some nice sturdy socks. Um, cause it's got 75% superwash wool and 25% nylon. And it's a Corydale base, not Merino. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I have some as well, but I'm going to try to, um, divvy out some of my purchases since I'm not going to be making any. Yeah. So so enable you as the year goes on. Yes. Yeah. Because enabling is one of my superpowers. <laughs> it is. So. And then um, I got some yummy awesomeness in the mail and you're all going to be super duper jealous. Mm -hmm. um, this is Kivyet Sock. So um, my stepdad got Kiviet socks from me uh, six years ago and uh, he has babied those things and they've been um, re you know darned and stitched up and whatnot and I've learned a lot in the last six years about what makes a what makes a good sock and what doesn't and and he thinks that the Kivya is the best thing on earth um, he said I stepped in I was outside my boot, I stepped in a puddle or snow or something, so his feet, his feet were wet, like the sock was wet, everything was wet, and he just kind of, you know, got, got the drips off, put his foot back in the boot, and was still warm all day. Hmm. And so he will swear up and down about the, the Kivyet socks. Um, he also babies them in that he'll put the Kivyet sock on and then he'll put the alpaca socks that I knit over the top of the Kivyet socks um, so that they're not getting the immediate rub and they're closer to his skin and the so layers, lots of layers. Anyway, he treats them nice and he hasn't gotten new ones in a very long time and so this, uh, you know, the last time we saw him he pulled me aside and said, could you make me another pair? <laughs> So I did some research and they actually came out with a Kivyet sock and I don't know how long that this blend has been around. It might have been around before but I just didn't know how to research and what I wanted the composition of the sock to be. Um, but this is going to be less Kivyet in the socks that he owns now um, but I'm sure that he will be doing a lot less darning on the um, sock because it is 35% Kiviet, 40% Superwash Merino, 15% Bamboo, and 10% Nylon. 
so there's a lot of things in there that that make me think that these are going to be a nice um well-worn sock mm -hmm. i think that it's a four ply as well so it's got a lot of plies to give it strength mm -hmm. um and he is he's going to be deciding whether he wants them to be double thick boot socks because i have two of these brown ones mm. so um and then the green one is Would you mine double knit them then I don't think I'll double knit. I'll just help double. Okay. Um, or at least that's the thought if he wants them to be thicker. But this has got significant bloom. Mm -hmm. It looks, I mean, just to my eye compared to thicker. this. It yeah. Looks, I mean, this is a light fingering and I'm knitting it on zeros, but it looks a lot thicker than a that bijou basin is yeah that a, they were at um stitches midwest okay they had a lot of yeah so bijou basin um these were the only people who were currently carrying this at the best price so there are a few other places carrying this this brand um and this composition of um sock yarn um but they had the best price for sure and it was in stock um, in all of the colors that I was looking at. So um, that was a, a bonus. Uh, also, they had a one that was 30% silk, 70% kivet, um, that was also good yardage. And I think that that one was even fairly reasonable as well. I mean, when you're talking kivet, there is no like, you're spending a lot of money. But um, compared to the ones that are 100% can be at lace weight and all of that stuff, it seemed like, okay, for a, an actual fingering weight, several plies could be used as a sturdier um, object. Uh, it seemed like it was a good price. So that was um, a plug for them because, it, again, it was, it was the place that had it in stock and it was the cheapest. Was the green so. for you? Yes. Um, I don't know if it's going to inevitably be my payment for knitting the socks, but it doesn't have to be because I was prepared to buy it. I was just trying to save my, um, myself some shipping. Yep. So, and I think that the shipping was free because, you know, you're spending a lot of money when you order three skeins of this stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's it. We have the, um, the oh, yeah, that the was sent to us. That was it that was unique. Yes. Um, so Dana of the Unwind Yarn Company sent, I, I had been commenting about my large skeins mm -hmm. <laughs> and my obsession with them. And she's like, I have a large skein. So she has a worsted 600 yards, 250 grams, I believe, skein. And she split it in half and sent it to Amy and I. Mm -hmm. Um, this is the More Than Words colorway. Yes. Which is so pretty. More than it's pretty words. and manly at the same time. I really like it. I have to do. Sorry. It's hard to be pretty and manly. That's yeah. Cool. That's really good. And it kind of has like a graffiti-esque, like darker overtone, right? Like it's gritty and pretty at the same time. Mm -hmm. Um but not only does she offer this in a really large skein, it's also a new to me wool. So I have never had Targi before. Her base is 100% American grown and milled Targi. So, um, and I wrote a little bit about this on the blog today as well. Um, the, when a, um, your favorite Ramboulet mommy really loves a, um, what was it? Lincoln? Romney. Romney and Lincoln, which I think might be a Corydell, now that I'm thinking about it. They, um, I went out to Knitter's Review, and they have the breakdown of what Targi is. Um, but when they love each other very much, and they have babies, um, they, um, they are Targi cheap. And so it's, it's very dense and very smushy, um, but yet it's very sturdy. So it's got that, the Romney, Corey, Dale, Lincoln, whatever, the composition. That's the um, the more longer wool. And then the fine wool that you've heard us talk about in um, the Rambouillet gives it a really nice softness. So I wouldn't say that it's like Merino soft, but uh, um, again, I think that it's next to the skin soft. 
and I really, 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 really want to buy a sweater from him. <laughs> like, every fiber of my being is like, get this while you can! <laughs> <laughs> But instead, I'm going to knit a hat out of this and um, dream of the day when I can. Um, it, it's it's very smushy and nice and will make a very nice hat. Cool. Yeah, I can't... Um, yeah, like you told me, the Jill Draper makes stuff took down her mm -hmm. mega skeins of um, Rambouillet. So now it's like, well, I'm either going to have to spin myself a sweater. <laughs> I think maybe that was just for the holidays, though. Oh, okay. Don't don't quote me on that. You might be able to go out there now and get it. Okay. Although, no, no. I think I saw on Instagram that she said that that was the last game that should be dying up for a while until her sheepies got haircuts. Oh, okay. So it might be. Yeah. I don't know. I mean... The collector and hoarder and stasher in me wants to grab it while I can, right? Mm -hmm. But... I will be able to find Harvey someday, hopefully. Yep. You gotta make it past January. I know. Your <laughs> if you're cold, that or I have to go stalk Dana and get her get go to an event where the Unwind oh, Yarn yeah, Company is, and then I can buy it there. Because that's around your rules. <laughs> yes. But again, the core of my rules is to not be bringing in large amounts. But if I get to like June and I haven't, you know, I've worked my 400, 500, 600 yards a week. I'll have worked down some, 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 some substantial stash. And you're saying that it's okay to buy if you've already... No, at events. Still <laughs> at events. I'm going to stick to it. I'm like one of those people that you tell me I can't do something and I'm going to do it, mm -hmm. right? So you can reverse it. You can reverse psychology me, but don't, please. <laughs> you can't do this, Megan. Yes, I can um so yes this is a perfectly wonderful if you are not cold sheeping go get yourself a sweater quantity um yarn because it it um the only thing about it that i was kind of like gave it a little head tilt was that it was not super wash oh but you know what that romney i don't or not romney that Ramboulet wasn't super wash either just and saying yeah just saying so um oh it's just fantastic those colors and yeah. it's so squishy and nice so thank you dana and um thank you dana yes it's very pretty mine is already in the ball because i want to get it on the needles and i only got mine today yeah so. all balled up <laughs> kind of like all dolled up yeah all balled up and ready to dance mm -hmm. can't wait to get it on the needles and that's all i have to say this week yeah, yeah me too bye Bye, you've